Welcome to the Stop COVID Deaths webinar series brought to you by the University of the Philippines. The Stop COVID Deaths shorts make it easier for you to go to the presentations that you are interested in. I'm Dr. Raymond Sarmiento, Director of the National Telehealth Center. And I'm Dr. Susie Pineda Mercado, Adjunct Faculty of the National Telehealth Center. Together, Together let's, let's stop, stop COVID deaths. So thank you. Thank you for inviting me to, to be a panelist in this session on uh, limited face-to-face uh, -face school. Ba? Uh, let me start by introducing UP to you. We've been talking about UP all the time, but the UP actually consists of eight constituent universities across the country, and there are 21 campuses uh, across the country too. And we have uh, more than 54,000 students. And UP Manila is the health sciences uh, center of uh, the University of the Philippines system. You can see on the right side that uh, under UP Manila are actually, we have degree granting units and we have non-degree granting units. And for the, non, for the degree granting units, we have a list and uh, everything in red is actually a, pr practically a frontliner. And you can see that among the non-degree granting units of UP Manila will be our PGH and the National Institutes of Health. So when we talk about um, limited face-to-face uh, -face now, I really am looking at my degree granting units now and everything in red actually needs a certification from CHED to be allowed to do the limited face-to-face. -face. Now, when you talk about UP Manila, there are several levels of safety we're talking about. We're talking about safety to the health workers first, safety to the patients and the general public, and then safety to the non-PGH and non-NIH non employees. And that will mean the faculty, the students, and the staff. We're practically in one compound. So from, from Pedro Hill to Padre Faura, th that's UP Manila. So every time there is something that's happening in PGH, we must be aware because we may be affected. Now, I'd like to show this algorithm because one thing I've learned actually in the past uh, almost two years now is that Having a visual algorithm for our people on what to do is very crucial. So if I can just walk you through this algorithm. So here is a poster that we actually have uh, in the internet and distributed. Uh, there's a question, what do you, uh, what do you, what to do if you think you have uh, COVID-19? And you can see there's a question of whether you have symptoms or high risk. And there's already an advice, isolate. The third is to report, report your symptoms to BES. So let me introduce the BES. BES is actually an app developed by Raymond, our host, wherein through a, the cell phone or the computer, you're able to actually list down your, your um, uh, symptoms. And um, what will happen now is that it's, that's going to go to a, some, a supervisor level as to whether what kind of symptoms you have. So the best has been very useful for us here in UP Manila. And then eventually the, the advice is to contact a focal person. And next slide, I'm going to talk more about the, the contact, the focal person. And the last will be to contact actually the university health service or our hotline number. So having a visual algorithm actually is very helpful for the general population because they, they know what to do. They don't have to look for it. Just save this sheet of paper. Now I, I show this, um, uh, list uh, this table actually it's a table with names but basically what we've done is that we do have an overall nurse coordinator for for COVID concerns I'm not talking about PGH I'm talking about the rest of the UP Manila community and uh, we noted that uh, the, every college has admin staff faculty and students so we actually put in a, a person in charge which means if you have the symptoms then you've got a you have a person to talk to and every day, uh, the chancellor and the vice chancellor for administration, actually, we are informed if there is a positive case. And if I have a dean who is symptomatic, I'm also aware because they answered the best. So this system has been very useful for us in administration. And I felt that the anxiety has actually toned down. Now, uh, moving on now to the guidelines. If you notice, this is dated August 2020. We really wanted to open already in August 2020. We've been preparing for this. But um, as you can see here now, if you look at my list on the left, uh, so far we have five who have, given, have been given approval. College of Pharmacy and SHS Palo, Palo Leite are now in the, in the line of being um, uh, 
hopefully accredited very soon. If I may just mention that the School of Health, for, of Health Sciences has four campuses, one in Palo Leite, Corona del uh, Cotabato, South Cotabato, Baler Aurora, and we just opened Tarlac Tarlac. So let's uh, take a look now on what has happened. Of course, just like anybody else, we had to meet with the mayor and got the LGU approval. Of course, you know, we had to go through a process of being visited by a team from CHED, and here we received our award on July 14 uh, of uh, this year. We were quite excited about it because for a year we've been waiting for this time that we be allowed to start the limited face-to-face. -face. Now, so these are the colleges that have been allowed to, to offer the face-to-face, -face, College of Medicine, College of Nursing, College of Dentistry, College of Public Health, and College of Medical Professions. So, each of these colleges were visited by a team from CHED and a team of experts from different universities. Now, instead of presenting every college, I've actually grouped them because there are some general policies and guidelines that's actually shared by all. And as you can see that as early as July of 2021, it has been finalized and uh, vetted by uh, administration at UP system. And at the same time, uh, it has been revised many times to make sure that, you know, it is appropriate for all of the colleges. So, of course, number one is still the vaccination. There's a very, very big push. And uh, I just cited a few that have been significant to the success of the vaccination. Um, College of Medicine right now um, has about 99% vaccinated. College of Allied Medical Professions has about uh, 100%. And then for the College of Nursing for incoming third year, it's also 100%. And for dentistry, about 95%. So in other words, when you say vaccination now, we have many partners anywhere from PGH, LGUs. As a matter of fact, Medicine partnered with Santa Ana Hospital to bring in their interns and medical students. And very recently, we had the Bakuna bus from the Philippine Red Cross. So let me just walk you a few things that have been done by all of the colleges. I will only show you a few pictures. So we had to actually install a lot of the electric fans and we had to put all the signage as you can see here that, you know, uh, whereas in the past, you know, you didn't really matter where you pass, but we've got all of these arrows. We've got uh, lines for exit and uh, the entrance and then uh, uh, in every in every college now uh, you will have this. Uh, temperature uh, me uh, measurement, as well as the alcohol at the beginning. Actually, in front of every room, you also have this, every room. So you cannot just enter a room now without having a gun through the, um, the precautionary measures. So we've been able to, we started looking at the spaces and then although there are no people yet, but the thing is you can see here that uh, this is a cafeteria that's supposed to be open anytime now. And then uh, we also have outdoor eating spaces that we've started to identify, again, with the precautions of spacing and uh, physical distance and so on. Uh, we do have the isolation room. So this is, so we have four, for four students with a capacity of four students, two at the College of Nursing and two at the College of Public Health to service all the students or staff or faculty who may actually turn out to be symptomatic during a class. So let's just walk through some of the colleges and see how, you know, how they look like. So this is the College of Allied Medical Professions for physical therapy, occupational therapy, and, uh, and uh, speech therapy. And as you can see, they, at the beginning, they had a lot of, uh, uh, they practiced on a lot of simulated patients, actually. But they actually started already the face-to-face, -face, and you can see the distancing even with the, with the parent and the barrier that have been put in place. So... Whereas in the past, this would be full of students and patients. Now they have been scheduled uh, depending on how many will be allowed in the room. Um, despite the fact that we have many students and many patients, now they have to line up because they have to follow the schedule of the, you know, uh, the, the, cycli the, cycli the cyclical shift of four days and the 10 days rest. And as you can see here again, they actually use the app of best because every student must know, must know if she is symptomatic, must not go to the office. And if ever she is symptomatic, then the teacher will actually know and then they know how to start the tracing in that particular class. Going to dentistry, which I was sharing with the group, that's probably my most expensive college. We just for the retrofitting of the classes, and I'm not even finished yet, we have spent 19 million just for the HVAC of the clinical rooms. Uh, you can see here that there are no barriers here in this uh, laboratory. Uh, the students have come in here uh, when they were no pati actual patients, they were using actually the, the mannequins here. 
uh, as you can see here now, it's the same, whereas before this was, you know, next to each other. Now you've got the physical barrier and there are a lot of visuals actually all over the place to remind the students on what to do you know, in the case when they're seeing patients. And the other thing is that we've got a lot of mobile acrylic barriers. Uh, they're, they, every classroom actually has S2 and the, to make sure that, you know, we provide additional protection. Now, this is the memorandum that we're following, uh, specifically for dentistry, requiring that the, the students, the faculty, and staff would have the tests done three to five days prior to the start of classes. Now, going to nursing, it's same as the College of, Al uh, College of Allied Medical Professions. They do the four days face-to-face -face and the 10 days of quarantine. The second thing is that we have smaller classes now, uh, very limited and timed, and um, with the with the, with, with the regular self-monitor reporting, even during at the time of they have the class. One thing that's interesting here is that after every simulation activity, they have a debriefing. So, uh, well, not face-to-face, -face, but still a virtual. But the important thing is that they, they get to see what's happening to the, to the faculty also and to the students. Now for medicine. Now, of the many activities of medicine, I will only highlight two actually, and that will be for anatomy and internship. For every level, there are a specific set of activities, but let me start with uh, anatomy. Um, so for anatomy, whereas in the past, you have a room full of uh, students and uh, cadavers lined up, you can see here that now they're also scheduled. They already had their face-to-face -face, uh, prosection for, for medicine. And you can see that uh, the Dean, Dean Charlotte Chong, uh, actually at the beginning of the pandemic bought virtual digital dissection stations. So, uh, you know, they had to think fast because we could not stop producing the doctors. And this became very handy at the beginning of the pandemic. So uh, life went on at the College of Medicine. Uh, moving on to internship. They started the skills workshop on open air. They following all the protocols before they went to the clinic. But right now, we already have interns rotating in PGH. And as a matter of fact, if I just if I may just list some of the things, all the interns are actually vaccinated with one person who did not give a waiver. There are clinical rotations. They they participate already in non-COVID areas. They again they use the app to make sure that they are they don't have the symptoms like they have the symptoms they have to consult and they have to follow the protocols and as you can see here that if ever they become positive then administration takes care of helping them i show this picture of dean chong uh, dean of the college of medicine actually showing her teaching an intern uh, during the rotation at orl so you know this is what the students are missing the real opportunity to be able to see the patients not only in the wards but also at the operating room now and the last, for the College of Public Health, in addition to all the things that I mentioned, the College of Public Health was actually designated by CHED uh, to establish the Public Health Experts Group. And as a matter of fact, they assist other state universities and colleges on, on the proper guidelines and uh, in preparing them for, for the face-to-face. -face. So they, they actually have been training evaluators nationwide, and they also participate in visiting the schools. So if in, 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 in summary, there are things that are common to all of the colleges and there are things that are uh, peculiar to a particular college. So what's coming up? Well, College of Pharmacy is about to open, they're ready and we've just made an appeal. And the School for Health Sciences is being visited by CHED right now. And the South uh, Coronadal and Baler have actually applied already for their possible accreditation. Does this mean that we're ready? We do have challenges. So let me mention some of the challenges, major challenges, because I have a lot of minor challenges. First challenge is the safety during travel to the campus. Whether you like it or not, uh, we don't have enough beds for them. We don't have, we cannot accommodate, we cannot do a bubble for them. So even if I keep the campus safe, then I still have the problem of their safety coming to school. And the, the third bullet is something that we, we really have to consider. Once we start the face-to-face, -face, uh, we have to establish the protocol. We know that when a patient becomes positive, uh, we have an isolation room. But what about the other students who are exposed? So we're just now finalizing the protocol because we do have a guideline now. We're in a student, the whole class is to be managed, not just the student who turned out to be positive. 
So let me answer the question. Aligtas na ba sa UP Manila? Now, people say that because we have PGH, then, you know, we should have the fear. But, you know, to be honest, because PGH is within the campus, they have actually come up a lot of guidelines that we have been able to, to actually use in the setting of the academic, uh, uh, academic setting. And since everybody is careful, then now we're no longer scared that we're actually within the same campus, breathing the same air as the Philippine General Hospital. So with that, I want to thank again, you know, uh, uh, TVUP for considering the face-to-face, uh, -face, limited face-to-face -face as one of its topics today. Maraming salamat. We hope that you learned as much as we did from that excellent presentation. We also hope that you will join us every Friday from 12 noon to 2 p.m. Manila time on Zoom, Facebook, or YouTube. So stay safe, stay connected, and, and see, see you online! online.